once again very warm welcome guys and uh, whatever your career objectives are there uh, in terms of iam so iam is the best domain i would say uh, you know if to look for uh, for a long term or for a long run uh, of career so this is one of the you know, best domains i say i will say okay so you can you can plan your career okay so what all the terminologies okay so what all the iam terminologies what all the iam core areas uh, we have i will try to cover those so i will try to present those topics in front of you so that you will get an idea what exactly is happening in the market yeah so well so yeah so i think uh, that's all about myself guys yeah so let me uh, continue with the first slide for the day guys okay so once again guys very warm welcome to this webinar okay so this webinar i as much as information i could provide you guys okay i'll try to provide the valuable information okay so maybe it will help you in your upskilling of your career okay so well so let's uh, talk about uh, infosec train so as most of you guys are aware that infosec train is, is a you know, one of the popular uh, you know, training institutes or training uh, you know, organizations so it has been established in the year 2016 one of the finest security security technology and uh, training and consulting company so where we have wide range of uh, professional trainers a uh, wide range of professional trainings programs available and a lot of certifications consulting services we do provide okay and we have highly skilled highly qualified uh, trainers in our pool of training well so our endorsement so no, four plus years so i think this is one year down uh, this presentation uh, i think it's not yeah so it's five years now uh, five plus years of services across uh, the trainings okay so 70 plus pool of trainers available and 150 plus you know, courses which have been offering and uh, you no know, we have a lot of you know, a lot of professionals who got trained with us and there are a lot of valuable partners which are all our you no, know, which are there with infosec okay and we have delivered 100 plus corporate trainings in uh, myself i have delivered a lot of well so these are the largest clients uh, we have i mean uh, the trusted clients of infosec and let me take you to the next slide yeah so why infosec uh, so why infosec uh, infosec has a lot of certified and experienced instructors as trainers and flexible mode of training you have you you can take online mm -hmm. offline you know, and you get an access to a uh, lifetime access to the access recordings to the materials which we are delivering post training completion you get a certificate and lot of comfortable uh, training modes we have yeah so that's why I say you know, infosec has become popular yeah so le now let me come back to my actual uh, you know, presentation which has been uh, you know, organized by infosec train yeah well uh, so let me start with some basic uh, term iam domains right we are starting so i want to talk about identity and access management as you guys most of you are already aware what is identity and access management okay identity is nothing but no, a physical human being or no a a physical person or a human being is called as an identity guys okay so identity and then access management it's identity and access management is a function fundamental and critical uh no cyber security capability to ensure right people has the right access at a right time okay so that is why identity access management has come into the picture and uh, no it is everywhere any organization you take so identity and access management is the core area and uh, uh, you don't find uh, you know to add you here uh, we don't find any layoffs for uh, for the iam uh, or, no domains basically for the iam positions you never ever find some layoffs happening okay mass layoffs or some kind of layoffs you no know, happening for this particular uh, you no know, tool or the, these particular products so this is a kind of area where you could uh, you know, look for a long term you know, uh, career opportunities so you can even retire after this particular you no know, after this uh, iam iam uh, domain experiences i mean to say okay so that's that's pop that's how it's uh, popular and that is how huge demanded technology it is yeah so yeah let me come back to the topics for the day so iam domains guys okay so iam domains so 
there are a few things I am going to cover uh, in this today's agenda as part of IAM domains. Yeah. So identification, first thing, identification, authentication, authorization, and accounting. So that is called as IAA. So we're going to talk about IAAA. Uh, what exactly? Uh, you know, what we need to identify? What needs to be authenticated? What are the authorizations? And what is the accounting? What is the accountability? Okay. So next we're going to see about the privileged access management. So what is privileged access management? Uh, no, what are the things uh, comes under privileged access management? No, those things we're going to cover. So next we're going to talk about the identity governance. So what is identity governance? OK. And uh, no, what are the things we come as part of identity governance? What are the things we control on day to day on day to day basis inside an organization level? And we're going to talk about some of the identity uh, data governance okay so data governance and protections like common laws uh, what are the you no know, uh, common industry laws uh, which we need to follow in terms of data protection uh, like gdpr or you know, lot of things we're going to discuss about the data protection acts and lot of uh, insights about the data governance and protection also so next uh, we will be talking about the prerequisites okay so if you want to upskill your career you want to make your uh, way for the you no know, identity and access management so you want to become an iam engineer then what are what is your roadmap and what is your uh, prerequisites okay main prerequisite and what sort of roles and responsibilities you can expect so when you want to become an iam engineer yeah so these are all the few things i am going to cover for the day yeah yeah so let's kick start uh, let's start with this thing okay so identif you know, identification authentication authorization and accounting okay so iaa so this is the first thing uh, i'm going to cover what are the things we're gonna see here so some of the information security principles i'm going to talk about guys okay there is some some of the you know, information security principles which we need to follow you know, in terms of confidentiality integrity and availability all of that stuff and i'm gonna define what is uh, no I, i'm going to define each term here like what is authentication what is authorization what is identification no all of that so next i am going to talk about the least privileges okay. so maybe um, I, I can i can talk about uh, least privileges non repudiation job orientation principles okay so how the job orientation job roles roles and responsibilities work yeah so in identification uh, authentication at authorization and accounting so these are all the few listed pointers which are all important i would say uh, and i will be talking about identity federation uh, single sign on passwords biometrics uh, no these are all the few these are all the few pointers i would be speaking on this you know, in the further slides okay yeah so let's start with this uh, information security core principles confidentiality integrity and availability guys okay so confidentiality plays a key role in an organization standard okay so when you want to meet the cyber security standards so you you have to maintain the confidentiality of the organization guys okay so this is con confidentiality of the access confidentiality of the information you no know, information security breaches so those things uh, those are the areas you could look for the confidentiality guys so next we have the uh, integrity so when we say integrity term uh, cia so confidentiality integrity and availability so let's talk about integrity here so integrity means the ethics you follow uh, in an organization guys okay ethics so maybe you know data sharing uh, you no know, sharing uh, shared folder ethics uh, and uh, you no know, doing some uh, some kind of malpractice okay so you no know, so those are all not not at all ethical those are all uh, no information security breaches encouraging information security breaches or risk inside the organization so those are all uh, no doesn't come under integrity guys okay integrity in the sense it's pure authenticity accuracy and non repudiation no? i would say it's a non repudiation thing okay so integrity everyone has to follow uh, the some rules and regulations and some ethics in their work culture so that is where the integrity comes into the picture so if you are not if you are not integrated so maybe a scrum model or maybe you no know, a water flow model or maybe some kind of uh, sdlc processes which you are following in in the deploy you no know, 
development life cycle in the software development life cycle. So you need to maintain the accuracy of the information, integrity, authenticity and non repudiation guys. So that is where uh, the information has to be crisp and the information has to be right information. So when you speak or when you try to portray something, so be integrated, be uh, no, follow the integrity and uh, be right, uh, right person and right professional for every every role and responsibility you follow. Okay, so next uh, availability. So, so when I, when I say availability, so availability in the sense, so it's a software uh, availability. Also, I could say high high redundancy or maybe high availability of the uh, the deliverables or services which you are offering to the customer or you no, know, you have to be responsive and all of that. So you need to give your high availability to the customers. Okay? So that's that's all about the availability here. Okay? So confidentiality, integrity and availability is the core principles of information security. Everyone has to adhere to these principles and we need to follow these guidelines. Okay, so next let me talk about uh, you know, IA in depth identity identification authentication authorization and accounting yeah yeah so there is a set of controls uh, that governance the accesses and digital services and the data mechanism which is used inside the you know, organizations guys okay so i have i have portrayed an example here uh, to differentiate each and every term here to make you understand each and end term uh, what is the importance of that term here so there is an employee here. OK. So there's an employee uh, of an organization. So. So I'm a Bob, so I'm Bob and I need an access to the database. OK, so this is called as identification. So identification means what what needs uh, what access you need you know, in order to perform your uh, uh, job functions or the responsibilities. OK, so that is your identification. What access you need? So here Bob needs an access to the database. That is the identification. Okay, so next we have authentication. Okay, so when I say authentication, what is your password? Okay, what is your password? Either your password is alphanumeric or no, what what password policy you are following, and either it is getting authenticated or validated with against the system or not. So generally, it will get validated every time when you try to log into the system. So it will get validated in the back end. You no, know, whether uh, your Password is strong password, or you no, know, either it's a uh, no non alphanumeric password, or maybe just numerics, or you know, just alphabets, or no special with no special characters. So there should be a standard uh, thing you need to follow you know, when when it comes to the authentication, guys. Okay, so that is my authentication. So cross verifying the credentials or validating the credentials, I would say you know, it has an authentication, guys. Okay, authentication. Okay, so next we have authorization. So when I say authorization, so see here, read only access. Okay, so the access to the system. See here, you identified what access you need, and you got authenticated to the system, and you have only the read only access. Okay, to the uh, to the environment. Okay, to the tables. So that is your authorization, guys. Okay, that, that is the limited access or what level of access you have inside the you no know, inside the application is called as an you know, authorization, or we can call it as an Authorization or a level of access, or what entitled you, know, you are you know, when you when you get an access, what entitled you are to perform uh, to what level of you know, entitlement you have, what level of permission you have, you know, what kind of operations you could perform inside the organization, inside an application, you no, know, inside a business application. So that is my you no know, read-only access. I would say it as a read-only, write write access, read access. Okay, so those I would say it has an authorization. Okay, what level of access you possess inside the organization? Okay, and accountability. Okay, so now we know what is identification, what is authentication, what is authorization. So now let I say, let me say accounting. So accounting in the sense, so what what active, what accountability you, know, you are performing you know, on the acts? What what accountability you are performing? Uh, you know, on on in terms of signing out or signing in or or uh, no are you copying something to you know, some environment or are you manipulating something to the database you no know, with with the with the access you are having so so those are all comes under so it will be captured as an activity or a log in the system so that that would be uh, no that i would say it as a 
accountability okay so accounting so you are accountable for your actions what you perform inside the organization guys okay so you do proper sign outs and uh, you see uh, no one knows your password so basically you need to follow your ethical you no know, professional ethical behavior or the integrity towards you no know, the activities you perform against the you no know, application systems okay so why because it it, it may you no know, they may capture your activity uh, you know, as a, as a session recording or maybe a session validation so th those things may happen in the back okay so this is something uh, you have to be aware of guys so that is my i triple so i you no know, identification authentication authorization and accounting guys okay well so let me talk about uh, another slide here so which is sso part okay so single sign on part okay so that is my identity uh, no identity federation okay so i think most of you guys uh, might be aware of you no know, the identity federation methodologies or you no know, i would say single sign on okay so single when i say single sign on okay so let me brief you more about this uh, single sign on yeah a uh, single sign on guys okay so so identity federation uh, no it it uh, it's nothing but uh, putting all together in a single application with a single user access okay so there will be an identity provider and there will be a service provider okay so this uh, service provider uh, what it does is you know, it will uh, provide the services to the uh, you no know, user uh, like what are the applications it is going to be catered you no know? so those applications will be kept in front of the user and identity provider maybe active directory or maybe an a sale point identity iq system so that is my identity provider where the data flow will happen from you know identity provider to my service provider so when i say service provider uh, we could uh, we could call a service provider as an sso solution or maybe some kind of sso tool uh, so which we popularly uh, there are some popular tools we have like okta uh octa octa identity no, access management uh, we have uh no, ping access management so there are a lot of sso solutions cyber uh, cyber sentry 5 okay so we have sentry 5 services okay so there are a lot of uh, no sso solutions available in the market guys okay so we have savvy and sso solution okay so we have identity now those are all some of the identity and access management solutions which you can look for uh, actually so how uh, so in an organization so how difficult guys okay so do you think an organization will have two three applications two three enterprise applications guys so if it is a larger organization how many applications do you think guys okay they will have so you no know, roughly uh, you can expect around you no know, 30 to 40 or maybe you can expect around 100 to 150 okay so that many you no know, that many applications are there inside the organization guys okay across the department across the streams so these many applications they will be managing so in order to manage this huge infrastructure okay huge you no know, enterprise applications and huge identities okay so what they do is so since these many applications so how difficult it is to remember uh, these passwords guys passwords for each application so it would be very difficult right so if you have different username and different password then i think it's a you no know, so there is very difficult uh, situation where uh, to remember the passwords okay and if you forget the password again you need to reach out to the help desk team or the you no know, or the uh, network team uh, you no know, asking them to reset your password you no know, all those things you, know, you may you may need to you may need to reach out to them okay so remembering the password is a hectic task okay with the different usernames and different passwords so there is a you no know, big challenge altogether so when you have this kind of sso solutions in place like uh, like uh, the organization has procured this kind of octa as their you know, opted as octa as their sso solution in that case what happens you know so octa can be easily integrated with all the business applications guys okay so it can be easily integrated with all the business applications and that business applications will be you no know, one will be enabled with the sso you know, sso when i say sso single credentials across all the applications 
okay one credentials one login credentials will allow you to log into all business applications n number of business applications you may have inside the organization so you know, it will allow you to log into all these business applications with a single credentials yes like on day to day basis today if you see now we are logging uh, no gmail right so if you have a one valid gmail account you can log into google drive you can log into youtube or no lot of platforms okay calend google calendar no uh, google meet so these are all authenticated against only one email id right so one email id one and one password so similarly no my identity federation what happens so no it will enables us to have one credentials across all the applications yes, okay so this will and uh, when i when it comes to the federation so there's lot of federation methodologies are available in the market so where you, know, you can do uh, with a saml based integration or open id based integration so there will be a lot of agents you need to install and you need to perform those integrations okay in order to make it uh, the password synchronized and you can always do apply lot of access policies uh, on top of the no let us take an example octa platform so you can do restrict lot of zone specific accesses device specific accesses no and uh, region based specific accesses can be restricted you know, for the user guys okay right so yeah so lot of uh, sso solutions has this authentication uh, methodologies that is my authentication factors okay uh, like you know there are popular authentication method methodologies i want to uh, speak so passwords pass phrases okay uh, pin codes pass codes so these are all uh, i would say these are all something you know already okay so you know your password you know your pass phrase or you know your pin number so that is something you already know about it okay so that is no that is my you know passwords or pass phrases or pin codes guys okay so next no so there is some a device you have okay so there is a device we have so that is something you have okay so there is something you have so a device in in hand okay so something you know something you have already in hand that is called as my you no know, uh, maybe a usb token or maybe a rsa token or a mobile phone so where you could instantly no, you receive a, a no, OTP to your mobile device, and you can just authenticate against you know, that particular OTP or you know, the token. So there are a lot of authenticator platforms. Like you know, we have uh, Google Authenticator, we have you no know, uh, Microsoft Authenticator. So these authenticator platforms will help us you know, in generating the tokens while logging to the sensitive applications or critical applications of the enterprise. Okay, so something you already have. Okay, that is no, that is one of the authentication factor. I would say. Okay, next we have the something you are already. So something you are uh, already like you know it may be a biometrics. So when I say biometrics, maybe a digital signature or maybe a fingerprint. Okay, so what are the fingerprint? Uh, no, you need to get authenticated against your fingerprints or maybe you no know, face ID. Okay, or maybe I. Uh, retina no, retina authentication so there are a lot of lot of biometric authentications are happening uh, recently so next we are something you do with your location so maybe you no know, a security kind of question so something you do uh, like you know uh, what is your pet name or maybe what is your location what is your typing speed you no know? so those kind of questions okay something you do already know about okay so this is these are all the authentication factors i would say so when i say passwords as you know already so it's password okay you need to maintain a strong password with eight, eight minimum characters okay it should be mixed characters with alphanumeric you no know, numbers symbols in it and then you need to have okay okay guess uh, you need to have the password i uh, guess and use passphrases you need to uh, store a hints to your password all of that so when it comes to the authenticator authenticator app a token based authentication it's as simple as that you get a google authenticator or a no rsa token authenticator which will instantly help you in logging to the critical applications okay so next the bio biometrics as i said uh, digital signatures or uh, no face recognition authentication okay face lock 
so these things comes under my uh, you know biometrics okay so these are all the authentication factors lot of this you know of sso solutions offer uh, when you procure those licenses guys okay so next uh, let's talk about the next thing here so that is pam uh, privileged access management so this is a popular term you might have heard uh, you no know, privileged access management yeah so i think there is a ping um, from syed uh, which i am solutions does in physic train yeah so we do offer sale point identity iq so it's popular i am solution sale point iq so you may enroll for sale point yeah so when you want to look for an i am yeah well so let me come back guys uh, so this is my uh, privileged access management okay so privileged accounts okay so when i say privileged so when i say the, the term privileged okay so there are a lot of things uh, comes under the privileged access management so basically uh, privileged accounts okay so privileged accounts are administrator accounts so that is basically non human accounts so non human accounts or the administrator accounts needs to be you know monitored okay so those falls under uh, my privileged access management okay so credential management okay so basically rotating your password you know uh, when you want to log into the critical applications of the organization so maybe you no know, payroll system or some kind of critical system where you have all the accesses critical accesses of the organization so then i would say it as pre, you know privileged credential management guys okay credentials management next we have session management so maybe you are logging to some production server you know from the back end okay so that should be monitored or session should be recorded you know for our audit purposes okay so if you do something like you know try installing some malicious you know application or a ransom application in the server so it has to be captured and regularly it has to be monitored as part of the session monitoring so when you log into any enterprise you know application servers so you know this would applicable guys okay so there are a lot of tools uh, which are all pam tools i would say like cyberarc we have we have a uh, savian pam savian also offers this pam uh, solution and there are uh, i think cyberarc is leading the market guys right now okay so you can take cyberarc is one of the best you no know, one of the best solutions uh, for uh, session monitoring session recording credential uh, management session management so i would say these are all more uh, you no know, important ones and the best you no know, best uh, market you know best available in the market guys okay so next we have uh, privileged accounts monitoring and analysis so again it comes uh, to the same uh, session monitoring and you know, those things so basically these accounts non human accounts or the administrator accounts or service account needs to be closely monitored and you no know, periodically it needs to be analyzed properly okay so there are a lot of access management solutions so which i was talking about cyberarc and all of those tools right so popular tools so you can look for these kind of popular tools when you want to pitch into the pam uh, pam uh, pam area so you have uh, you no know, sso area where you can pitch in so you have uh no pam area so that's privileged account management and all of that okay so next we have application uh, whitelisting you no know, what what are the organization applications uh, within the organization you want to whitelist okay so you want to restrict in few regions or maybe you no know, country based restrictions you want to apply so those software restrictions can also be applied you know, when you procure the you know, pam solutions yeah so as i was talking about pam okay so let me uh, talk about some uh, key principles yeah so uh, what exactly uh, the privileged accounts uh, and what what accounts can be called as a privileged accounts okay so maybe across the uh, permissions across the applications databases and everything no? so i'm cumulatively putting all together here so local admin so local admin accounts like non person accounts that provide you know administrative access you know local host instances you no know, those can be called as one of the privileged account you no know, domain accounts so domain administrator accounts you know so those can be called as my uh, you know privileged account so there is something called as emergency admins so uh, you know some unprivileged accounts so can be instantly made it as privileged for that point of time uh, in order to overcome some you know criticalities so so that's a kind of emergency break glass you know, we can say it as a break glass account as well 
Okay, so this kind of break glass account, emergency account, or we can say it as root accounts. That is super admin accounts. I would say, you no, know, uh, the non-human accounts or the system administrator accounts or the, you know, all of those can be called as root accounts, database root accounts, service accounts, application admin accounts. So where with the all highest privileges to the admin accounts. Okay, so so using these admin accounts, uh, logging into the session environments. So that is my privileged session management again. So there's there is a possibility of middleman attack. Yeah, so we have to be very careful. Uh, you know, while while these sessions are happening. So as I said, these service accounts or uh, you know, least to privileged accounts or privileged accounts are being used you know, uh, to access the uh, servers. So there is a huge possibility of middleman attack guys. Okay, so you can always you know, uh, look for this uh, session monitoring uh, tools. Okay, it's it's uh, to avoid this middleman attack. So you know, we need a proper uh, you know, PAM solutions, okay, which will handle you know, the blockages of you know, uncertified, you know, uncertified portals or maybe you know, unencrypted portals. Okay, so yeah, so we, we mainly we will talk about the session integrity. Okay, so the main thing is session integrity is important. So like whether no, it is authentic or not. What destination you are performing? What action you are performing? It it, it is uh, no, it is meeting the integrity principles or not? Okay. So session integrity principles, session monitoring. What what exactly uh, you are performing? Are you are you uh, no, stopping some of the services uh, which are important for uh, an application to get executed? Okay. So that comes under my session monitoring, session encryption. So as I said. This the site uh, we are visitor visiting to uh, is it is it uh, truly authentic? No, is truly authenticated or encrypted? I would say is it a certified one? Okay, so is it a certified or it is like you no know, normal, you no know, unsecured website? So you have to be you know, checking the green mark in the web browser uh, while while you want to check the you know, protected one. So there are a lot of protected unprotected sites. So, okay, you have to be careful about those things okay so session monitoring comes under those things guys okay so that's you know, certificate certificates and all of that so this is my privileged session management so that's my uh, one of the stream of uh, you no know, pam that is privileged account management yeah so next uh, let's come back to the third one to for the day so that is my identity governance and administration so it's very uh, more important one so as mentioned in the beginning of the session so uh, no user access terminations okay so identity governance and administration tools so there are popular tools like sale point is one of the leader in the market uh, which is like you know one of the best identity and access management solutions guys okay the second leader is savient again and we have third is ibm isim we have oracle we have you know one identity so there is a a lot of identity and access management guys so you can go to the gartner so just uh, try to visit the gartner and you can see you know what is what is the best identity and governance solutions in today's market so it's all as i said sale point is leader in the market and uh, if you try to you know learn sale point yeah so that would be you know, best tool i would say in the iam space in the identity and access management in the identity governance and administration pay space so i think you can look for a sale point identity IQ. it's one of the best in the market guys yeah so what uh, what we exactly do uh, when it comes to the identity governance and administration so user onboarding and user offboarding or we can say it as terminations okay so whosoever uh, the employee is getting joined the organization so either he is getting all the birthright accesses okay is he uh, no when he's joining as a developer or you no know, we we need to you know, make sure that he get all the you no know, developer access on the day one itself okay so that is my onboarding of the application and the termination so we are making sure that okay user is being terminated timely on the last working day and you no know, if he's an ex employee his access needs to be disabled timely you no know, on the day one itself it has to get you know, deactivated or disabled okay so Onboarding and offboarding is one of the key areas and the key functionalities of identity and access management or identity governance and administration tools 
what they do uh, functionally and operationally as well. And next we have access request and role changes. So there's other thing called as access request. So you need some additional access. OK, uh, you need to have a proper uh, no. A proper approach. OK, so you need to have a proper approach uh, where to raise a request for a new additional access. So they should be well trained. I would say no, they should know how to submit a request and what is the next steps once you submit the request. Is it approvals are involved? No, what approvals are involved? Who will approve when and no, when I can I get the uh, access? So these things uh, comes under your access request. Guys. Okay. Next we have role changes, maybe internally moving uh, no, your uh, role changes. No, uh, that is role based access controls. Access controls. Okay, so next the access control who has what no, access to which resources now performing a role based access control no access validations and certifications that is performing a timely audits uh, no in an organization guys okay so audit is very crucial guys okay so when some investor needs to come to an organization uh, to invest something in your area in your company then they they do check your audit so we call it as uh, access validation or access recertification or in some tools they call it as access recertification certification all of that guys okay so basically access reviews that is the automatic audit procedures so every organization should have some kind of standard automatic audit procedures you know, which needs to be implemented in an organization so next we have segregation of duties so you know, applying some uh, segregation of duty policies Either if you have a role, then you should not be part of B role. So identifying the toxic combination of access, applying, you know, enforcing the policies. You know, those things comes under your segregation of duties. So that is basically the policies. Okay, next we have identity auditing and reporting. So there's a lot of analytical stuff happens in the background, like how many people are being onboarded today, how many be, you know, people are being offboarded. Either their access is being properly, you no, know, being disabled or not. So you no, know, it has to be reported, guys. It has to be properly audited and it has to be properly reported as well. Okay. Next, we have uh, the life cycle management. So that is identity life cycle management. So again, the entire life cycle, you no, know, from the starting, uh, from the joiner procedure to the exit procedures, you no, know, uh, throughout the areas. Know, what uh, throughout the phases of the uh, no tenure inside the organization so what identity and access management things you need to perform yeah so yeah let's let me talk about this uh, onboarding and offboarding a bit more uh, so like you know, uh, when i say onboarding account creations access requirements uh, training requirements so like you know if you are a new starter what to do with this access you know what is the uh, confidentiality integrity or the uh, data loss you need to follow within the organization so those things you no know, all those things you need to follow uh, no you need to do in in, in terms of an organization a uh, standard so they do lo do launch a lot of trainings and to make you understand these policies security principles so they do you know have some internal trainings offered so those things i mean to say Okay, next account termination. So when I say account termination, as soon as user got contract is completed, he has to get deactivated or disabled. You know? And access revocation. So what are the critical accesses he was supposed to he was having? It needs to be you no. Know, it needs to be deactivated or revocated. Yeah. So next we say asset relocation, asset uh, collection. So upon termination, so we need to collect his laptop or devices, whatever the organization devices you are offering. You know, once the user is being joined, so next we have our back. So as I said, uh, role-based access control, guys. Okay. So HR needs to have what what access, what uh, no, what are the limitations you need to have? Payroll access, sales sales team access, finance access. So everything will be like you know a role-based access control. So when you have a proper identity and access management tools in place. So we can achieve this proper uh, R back. No? So an automated access revocations and access terminations or no? access giving procedures we can apply inside the organization. Okay. So next, uh, let's see the access management and the identity governance part. 
So that is uh, comes under the access validation and uh, certification. So if you see here, there is a sales representative. So who has an access to some applications like he is part of Salesforce application. He is part of some homegrown uh, application tool. He is part of PeopleSoft. Okay, so these many applications uh, he has. So our access management has provided an access to these things. And identity governance, what it does, it it do fine ground access validation, guys. Okay, so identity governance means it will go in depth. Okay, uh, it will go to the granular level of accesses. Okay, so when I say identity governance, so it it goes to a granular level, like what role, what permission you have inside the organization. So see, are you should be part of APAC or should be part of America? Okay, so which central what access you need to have? Okay, so those granule permissions will get evaluated and it will be corrected. Now, when I say validation, so it will be corrected. Either you, know, you need this access or not. Okay, so they will take a decision on your accesses, guys. Okay, this is comes under your access validations and access governance part. Okay, so identity access management. So identity life cycle again. So I would say we have auditing reporting in place compliance activities so you no know, auditing reporting so provisioning provisioning is nothing but creating the user or onboarding the user so we have compliance we have auditing reporting you no know, policies i was talking about sods right so self services raising the request additional access request administration things password expiry notifications and all password management things and approvals no, these things comes under your identity life cycle guys. Okay, so let me talk about the last uh, no, for the day. So that is data governance and protection. So I uh, in this uh, there are few uh, things we need to take care here. So few pointers I have mentioned here, like data protection um, in the data data governance and data protection. So there are some data types, uh, data classifications are there, and there are a lot of industry laws, regulations unstructured data structured data okay so data management data monitoring security principles security policies standards procedures okay data breach incident responses so this will comes under your data protection guys okay so let me directly go to this uh, terminologies so some data types some sensitive data types i have mentioned here some uh, no data classifications also i have mentioned here so like you could say PII, so I would say PII personal uh, personally identified information. Okay, so personal information basically no PII. So next we have PHI so protected health information guys. So next we have intellectual property. So there should be a intellectual property. This is a data type. So this is my property. Okay, so that is intellectual property. I would say so the, the organizations will have their intellectual properties and all the rights on top of those intellectual properties okay so next the financial things like you know credit cards or financial statements and everything you no know, will come uh, is one of the you know sensitive so the sensitive data types where the organization need to focus on so next we have the data classifications like you no know, public data okay public data protected data you no know, secret top secret so this is the confidentiality level of the accesses so these are all the data classifications i would say official unofficial you no know, sensitive you no know, all of that uh, when it comes to the laws uh, as i said there are some uh, laws we have like you know gdpr okay so general data protection uh, you no know, regulation everyone needs to follow this you no know, data protection laws okay any organization needs to follow this one so next we have hepa you no know, so that is healthcare uh, information no protection act okay next we have australian cyber security center australian government no, commissions so these are all certain laws and rules and regulations which you can which an organization needs to follow when it comes to the data protection or data data protection laws okay so now how i can become an iam engineer so now uh, by this time you would have got a question mark so there are a lot of things are there in the bucket so no did uh, pam is there isso is there identity governance is there so now, you no, know, what what I could focus. Okay, so where I can you know spend time and how I can become an IAM engineer is the question. Okay, so the prerequisites to become an IAM engineer is nothing much, guys. So uh, the the basic prerequisite is uh, you no know, a bachelor's degree. Okay, you need to have a bachelor's degree 
in a proper information technology or computer science degree or any of the uh, no valid degree uh, no a valid country degree you need to have and you need to have uh, no, three to four maybe you need to have uh, it's fine that you we have three to five years of experience in any of the alternative technologies or any of the technologies with a corporate experience that is more than enough or maybe uh, a, 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 no, a proper experience you need to have guys okay corporate experience i would say next uh, you know having a, a tool experience uh, knowledge on sso products factor of authentication uh, privileged access management so those knowledges you require maybe if you have a good hands on or knowledge on forge rock or cyber rock or rock ping identity all of that maybe having some knowledge coming from the windows environment or maybe from the administrator uh, you no know, windows administration side or linux administration side or maybe one of the programming language knowledge like you know python or maybe java or some knowledge tool knowledge if you are aware if you have i think these are you know, more than enough to become an im engineer guys these are all the qualifications i would say okay so next the iam job duties so what are the roles and responsibilities you could expect when we uh, have an iam engineer so when you become an iam engineer what are the roles and expect what are the roles and responsibilities you may expect or the day-to-day -day activities you may expect uh, as an iam engineer so develop implement so, so first thing is develop implement or maintain the identity and access management solutions okay maybe the administrative part or support part of the you know engagement so these things you might need to you know develop implement so maybe you are an implementation engineer or uh, the support engineer or maybe a developer or a business analyst so those things you could expect so troubleshoot identify uh, resolve the technical difficulties of the user you know, troubleshoot the issues so those things you may expect you know, improve the governance that is comes under the enhancement the efficiency of the operations including coach the team members you know uh, about the knowledge best practices of rules and regulations cyber security standards so this could be you know you should be a coach and uh, you know, stay up to date on the cyber security threats and uh, industry solutions okay up to date those things will help you uh, no so this could be your one of the roles and responsibilities i would say guys when you become an iim engineer so what are all the available jobs so there are a lot of available jobs like with a different uh, do job descriptions so just go ahead to the job portals and type iim engineer so just see the suitable uh, suitable uh, job description and try to apply that so maybe you can search with these terminologies also like i am specialist i am security specialist analyst security engineer information security engineer identity and access management engineer cyber security consultant okay so these things you could always look for guys okay 